Thanks for joining. So the topic for today is what are the causes of infertility? And let's not say who is the cause of my infertility. What are the causes of infertility? That's the topic today. And I want to start by saying, I pray God Almighty, the one who made all of us to help us this evening, that whatever we say here, that somebody, a woman out there in Africa will be set free and will, all, will, will embrace what we've talked about today and will be set free. And I pray in God's name. Amen. So, infertility is a major problem all over the world. In Africa, is a big problem now. It's, it's a big problem among women. And today I'm going to be dealing mostly with the female causes of infertility, not the male. That's why I titled it part one, because I'll be talking part two next week. So part one is the female causes of infertility. What is infertility? Infertility is when a couple are living together. It might be a husband or a partner. You're just a partner. You're a couple. You're living together and you're having regular sex two to three times a week, but you cannot get pregnant up within the, a year. So you're living together. Some scholars in America says within six months, you're living together. You're having regular sexual intercourse and you cannot get pregnant. That is what we define as infertility. There are two types of infertility. We have the primary infertility where this woman has never been able to conceive since she was born. She grew up and as an adult, she has never been able to conceive. So that's primary infertility. We talk about secondary infertility where this woman had achieved pregnancy before, but be as a along the line, she's unable to get pregnant anymore. So she cannot achieve pregnancy again, but she has achieved pregnancy before in her life. That is secondary infertility. And I want to announce that there are more women with secondary infertility than primary infertility. There are so many women that have achieved pregnancy once in their life who have completely stopped. They cannot get pregnant anymore. And this is secondary infertility, not primary. Then we have that to know that there are different Two people, male and female, the male, 30% of the causes, one third is the man that causes it. One third is the woman that causes it. The, the last one third is a cause that we say they are unknown. So nobody knows the cause of this infertility. But one third causes of infertility is female. One third causes is male. So both partners together are the ones in together, they can cause infertility. So it is not only a woman problem. Infertility is a male and a female problem together. So when we see women going all around the world trying to get pregnant, trying to conceive, and the man is busy with his business, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking because to conceive you need both people to be well, we, you need both partners, you need the male and the female to be healthy enough to conceive. The male has to make sure he's well, the woman has to be well for them to conceive. So we say one third of the causes of infertility is woman, one third is male, and there's another one third that the causes are unknown. It is said that 66% of African women suffer from tubal diseases. Those things that cause them not to have children are tubal diseases. Tubal diseases I'm going to be talking about because I'm going to make it this very short. And a lot of them are caused by previous sexual transmitted infections, previous tuberculosis, previous infections that have not been treated that is now causing them to have infertility, that is now causing the woman to be unable to get pregnant. So previous sexual transmitted infections in Africa with women is a major 66% of women are the cause is the cause of the problem. We say here, and I'm going to say, a woman by the age of 27, that your eggs begin to reduce. The level of your eggs begin to reduce. The level of your eggs begin to reduce. At the age of 27, by the time every month you're losing an egg through, through your menstruation, you're losing an egg through ovulation. Every, every month you're losing an egg. At the age of 35, you have few eggs, 
few eggs remaining for you at the age of 35. At the age of 45, there may be no more eggs left for you. You are striking menopause. So this is a short cycle of a woman, a short reproductive cycle. Every woman's cycle is short. You have specific number of eggs that you produce, specific, specific number of eggs that you produce through your lifetime. And by the time you're hitting 27, 30, these eggs have begun to reduce. And by the time you hit 35, 40, you have very few number of eggs. And in that few number of eggs, they are not healthy. They are abnormal. So it is getting really difficult for you to get pregnant when you're getting old. This is the problem. And you and I know that most of African women, they lie about their age. Some people are 30, they tell you they are 20, they are 15, and they begin to struggle with the man. And the man doesn't know their real age. This is a problem. When you are getting old at 35, your eggs are reducing. At 40, they are reducing. So there's a specific number of eggs a woman produces in her life. And every month you're shedding this egg. Every month you're shedding this egg. And unfortunately, this is the fact. By the time you hit 45, there may be no more eggs left or the number of eggs left may be abnormal and very few for you to be able to have children to conceive. So this is the fact that we need to know that a woman's cycle is, is short. So how do we balance this? You may be going to school, you're studying, you're getting old, you, 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 you then want to get married at 30, you begin to have problems. So it is better to start finding out what are the causes of infertility? What am I supposed to do? Now, I'm going to use a photograph to describe the causes of infertility. And it's going to be very easy when we use this photograph to describe the causes of infertility. And I pray God to help us. This is the photograph. So I'm going to just be mentioning the causes of infertility with this photograph alone. We start from here, which is the, the vagina. Every woman has a vagina down here. The vagina is your front passage opening. Every woman has a vagina. What can cause a woman not to be, to have to be pregnant? The vagina, you can have infections in the vagina. Infections in the vagina, which causes inflammation and doesn't allow the sperm to go in. I want to say at this point that for a woman to get pregnant, a sperm has to flow. The sperm has to go into the woman's vagina, pass through the cervix, into the uterus, travel into this tube to meet an egg, fertilize the egg, travel back and get embedded in that uterus for you to receive, to, for you to conceive and have a, a pregnancy, intrauterine pregnancy. Your, the sperm has to travel through the vagina, through the cervix, into the uterus, go past the fallopian tubes, get somewhere here, get to to, to fertilize an egg and the egg travels back and stays somewhere here to form the baby. So any problems along this tract can be the cause of infertility. And I'm going to tell you why you should be looking for the causes, not what, who is the cause, not who is the cause of my infertility, but what is the cause of my infertility. The, 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 the vagina, the problems with the vagina can be infections. Vagina can be stenosis. A lot of women, a lot of women have done lots of things with your vagina. Some say they are tightening their vagina. They use herbal concoctions. They use alum. They put in there to tighten their vagina, to lie. I don't know why they do it to tighten their vagina. And this causes stenosis. This causes the vagina to be so stenos, so narrow, so tight that the sperm cannot pass in again. That is a major cause of infertility. Number two, the cervix, which is this part, which is the neck of the womb. You can have a lot of mucus, which is called cervical mucus block, which does not allow the sperm to travel. So the sperm cannot travel past this cervix and go all the way. The sperm has a long way to travel, but it cannot travel through this cervix and pass into the uterus, into the tube to fertilize an egg. So along this cervix, the sperm dies off. The sperm dies off. Every time you want to get pregnant, the sperm dies off. The cervical block there, the cervical stenosis, there's what is it's called cervical gets gets tight 
through different things through maybe there is a surgery you had a surgery or through infections a lot of infections cause this problem like sexually transmitted infections gonorrhea chlamydia a lot of women have these things when they were younger and they didn't treat it they partially treated it they went to the chemist or they got herbal concoction they didn't know that they haven't treated this infection the infection has stayed there and is causing narrowing is causing disruption along this part and when you get married when you are getting um spams in regularly it cannot go through there because of infection tuberculosis is one infection that can affect this part part of the body repeated uh, um, when we move on to the uterus in the uterus we have different things that can cause obstruction and not allow a woman to get pregnant one of them is fibroid fibroids are a simple uh, growth in the womb in the woman's womb there's a very common uh, among african women Af afro-caribbean women they have fibroid it can be in any part of this uterus it can be in the neck of the uterus it can be in the body of the uterus it can be at the fundus so with any part and the larger the the fibroid the more difficult for the baby which I said would travel, sorry guys, would travel all the way from here to be embedded here. There will be no place for that baby to be embedded. There will be nowhere for the baby to stay. So what happened? It just flushes out. So when most of these women have miscarriages, some of them cannot conceive because there's a fibrous seated there. May I say at this point that most pastors tell you you carry fibroid to change to a baby. Uh, can I say at this point that when they tell you these lies, my sister, please go to the hospital because there is no way God will, uh, th there is no way you can a, a miraculously change a fibroid into a baby you you are just uh, uh, doing you are you are you are trying to mimic god you are trying to bring god's standard down and he can't do it because you cannot box him you cannot change his standard if you have a fibroid in there you need to go and assess yourself do i need to take it out is it in the right position what do i need to do so we move from the uterus there are other things repeated dilatation and curating what we normally commonly call um, D and C. These are things that can. Sorry, guys. These are things that can cause the lining of this uterus to be completely taken off. So it's called the the, the scarring of the of the lining of the uterus. The scarring, what is called Asherman syndrome, the scarring of this uh, lining of the uterus, so that you cannot have a baby embedded in there. There will be no ba the baby will not the the egg the the fertilized egg will not be able to be embedded in there because of the scarring through maybe severe pelvic inflammatory infection severe tuberculosis severe and um, several times you've done dilatation and curative they've curated that place there's a lot of scar tissues so there will be no the baby cannot stay in there we move up from the uterus and we go to the tubes these are the tubes you go to the tubes you need a patent tube for the for your egg to travel to fertilize for the for the sperm to travel to fertilize the egg now with these tubes, you can have blockage in the tubes. You can have sexually transmitted infections also, which has called damage to these tubes. So these tubes can get damaged. This part of the tubes can get damaged. All this part, it can get damaged, can get narrowed through sexually transmitted infections, through tuberculosis, through uh, uh, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea. So when they get damaged, now the, the, the sperm cannot travel from here and get to those points it cannot get to that fallopian tube if it cannot get there there is no place for for the egg to be fertilized you cannot get pregnant you cannot get pregnant so i've mentioned that the, the vagina can have causes the cervix can have causes the uterus can have causes and the tubes itself can have can have causes so the tube commonly are tubal blockages tubal uh, 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 damages blockages which will not allow the egg to be fertilized which will not give any chance for the sperm to travel to that part to fertilize the egg so there will every month you you're you're having sex but you cannot have you cannot carry the baby you cannot have a fertilized egg that will form a baby because th that tube is damaged those tubes are damaged so we move on to the ovaries 
these are the ovaries there'll be problems with these ovaries problems with ovaries is that some women unfortunately have what we call a uh, premature ovarian syndrome they have what we call premature ovarian syndrome in premature ovarian syndrome they just stop producing eggs prematurely or they have polycystic ovary polycystic ovary is when that ovary is, is there but it's producing lots of abnormal old um, eggs abnormal ovary abnormal ovum with lots of cysts abnormal so you it is producing abnormal polycystic it's got lots of cysts on it it's not normal so it cannot be used the uh, uh, sperm cannot fertilize the egg too many eggs but not good quality that's polycystic you can have genetic abnormality which like turner syndrome which will not allow you to produce um, eggs you cannot have eggs sometimes your ovaries fail just for no reason you cannot know if you don't go to the hospital you cannot know the these things if you don't go to the hospital you can have hormonal changes like people who have thyroid thyroid problems uh, high thyroid functions or, or thyroid hormones in the body or low thyroid hormones in the body can affect a woman getting pregnant you can also have prolactin you know some women they see produce milk from their breast when they produce this milk maybe high level of prolactin is giving a negative information to the body is giving a negative information that this this woman doesn't want to get pregnant. It doesn't allow the woman to be pregnant. So that, that needs to be checked. Abnormal hormones. Every woman has hormones. So abnormal hormones, abnormal hormones can be the cause. Abnormal if you do not go to the doctor, how do you know what are the causes of your infertility? I've mentioned three broad groups here. Problems with the ovary, problems with ovulation, problems with the structure of the woman's reproductive tract from the vagina to the cervix to the womb to the tubes and to the eggs. There will be problems along the line. And if you don't check it out, how would you know that you have a problem? When they tell you that a pool somewhere is going to solve your problem, how would you know that that pool is going to unblock those tubes and allow the air to flow and allow the sperm to go in there and allow the egg to get implanted? How will you know when they tell you that you should come and buy a baby mat? The time you spend going from one prayer house to another, going from one pastor, if your tubes are damaged, my sister, you need to go and know. You need to sit with the gynecologist and ask the gynecologist what can I do because sometimes if the tubes are damaged they will advise you look you have good eggs but there is no way for this egg to travel down here to get fertilized so we can do in vitro fertilization for you so we can bypass this part of your 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 tract which is damaged and we can in, in implant the fertilized egg in your womb that is what the, the gynecologist will tell you. Look, we can bypass the damaged tubes. We can implant the egg in your womb. They will give you options. What are the options? You ask the doctor, what can I do? Okay, if I have hormonal imbalance, they can medically treat it. They can medically treat it for you. They can make you feel better. They can balance those hormones and you get pregnant. I'm not saying that all of these things can one part of it is male, one part is female, one part is unknown. So there are women and there are still studies going on looking for the causes of that little part that they don't know. Scientists are walking there at night. What can cause this woman? We've done everything but she can't still get pregnant. What can go on? But at least they are doing investigations. What are the risk factors for a woman not to get pregnant? What are the things that can cause age? Most of us, let us be truthful to ourselves. How many of us are telling people your true age? A lot of women are lying. A lot of women are telling people their false age. Some people are up to 40. They tell you they are 19. They tell you they are, they are 20. They tell you they are 25. And some women, they are not telling the truth. And as long as you are age, your biological age is 40, you are going to have problem with fertility because your eggs are reduced. Don't tell me I'm... I'm Maybe I'm, I'm not calling names. I'm just being truthful. You have to be truthful to yourself and to your spouse. 
if your spouse wants to marry you or stay with you, he will still stay with you. But when you lie, you complicate your life. You go from one place to another. You go from one pool of Bethsaida. You go from one miracle baby because you know the cause of your problem. Maybe you've quietly gone to the hospital and they've told you, look, you are already menopausal. Why are you then running around? Why are you then looking for who? Who is the cause of my problem? My mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. You begin to name people. You begin to call people enemies. You begin to get enemies all over the place. But you know the cause of your problem. You know why you are not getting pregnant. Because you're lying over your age. Because you're not telling people your age. This is very important. You sow seed everywhere. You tell people here and there. Oh, it is my mother-in-law. The pastor brings you and say, your mother-in-law is a witch. You fall on the floor and you roll. You know inside of you because you have the spirit of God in you that you are a liar. That you're lying. So each age is a major, major problem cause of infertility because a woman has a limited time to produce a woman has a limited time to produce by the age of 27 to 30 your eggs begins to reduce and every month you're losing egg every month you're losing egg by the time you're 45 you may not have any more eggs so you plan your time you focus as a woman you focus your your time you focus your energy you know that you have limited time you you don't lie over your age number two stress a lot of us are going through stress young people we want to acquire this want to do this want to do that you know we are going through a lot of st stress and this stress is not even helping us environmental factors maybe you're working in a in a farm or where they have pesticide where they have solvent chemicals chemical that are, are, are interrupting with your hormones and they are they are causing disruption in your hormones this can be a cause of your infertility alcohol smoking sti sexually transmitted infections how many young girls in africa go to the hospital and submit themselves when they have gonorrhea no they don't go they take herbal medication they go to the roadside chemist they take partial treatment they take a, 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 a resistant antibiotics and they leave this infection infection in their body for this long period and it has damaged their tubes it has damaged their uterus it has damaged their cervix and when they get married they start to have problems they start to have problems. Let me state here that God is the giver of children. Children are heritage of the Lord. Children are given by God. God wants all of us to have children. That is why he prepared us the way he prepared us. That is why he made us the way he made us. Children are heritage of the Lord. Children are given by God. Remember when Rachel was asking Isaac, give me, give me a child, give me a child, give me a child. Jacob. And Jacob said, am I God that gives children? When Anna was looking for a baby, Anna was barren. Did he go to any, any prophet? He went even when the prophet was sitting there, prophet Eli. He, she went to the altar and she talked to God Almighty. Because these people knew that it is only God that gives children. It is only God that gives children. It is only God Almighty that gives children. Children are heritage of the Lord. Children are given by God. Children cannot, you cannot take children from a prayer house. You cannot take the gift of God from a, a healing home, from a prayer house, from a prophet's den, from, from one uh, hole, from one pool of Bethesda, from one miracle baby, a baby mat. You can't. The gifts of God are from God himself. And it's only God that gives us these children. It's only God that gives us children. So it's Anna prayed to God and God answered Anna and God gave Anna a child. Rachel the same. So the gift of God, the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich. You don't have to go around. You need to ask yourself, who, what are the causes of my own problem? What can I do? What's the meaning of what? What is to ask questions, to interrogate, to find answers? Who means your, 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 who is the cause? You're beginning to see somebody in front of your problem. So it limits you. It limits you from seeking help. So when you have not got a child, the first thing to do as a woman is to go for medical checkup. 
Go and look for a gynecologist. I've talked to so many women. And when I ask them, have you seen a gynecologist all these years? Eh, yes, I see a doctor. Is that doctor a gynecologist? I'm sorry to say these are my colleagues, brilliant colleagues. But if you are not a gynecologist, declare yourself to this woman and say, I am not a gynecologist. Gynecologists have been trained for many years to understand the woman's body, to understand the changes, to understand the complications, to be able to deal with this problem. Gynecologists are not the same as just ordinary doctors. I cannot treat infertility because I am not a gynecologist. I can talk about it because I am a doctor. I know what I'm talking about. But I cannot investigate you. I cannot treat you because I am not a gynecologist. This is different. I can signpost you to a gynecologist. And that is what my colleagues should do. Signpost people to a gynecologist. Signpost people to a specialist. Let them go and seek help. When you get to the gynecologist, they are going to do what? Start to ask you questions. And I'm begging you, please, begin to be open to the gynecologist. Talk to the gynecologist. Tell them your real age. Let them know what they are dealing with. Submit yourself to medical checkup. History will be taken. Have you had any sexually transmitted infection before? Yes, I have. Accept it. This is you. Stop lying. Because doctors are not God. They are just working on information. They are going to ask you to do tests. They are going to submit your, yourself and your husband to, for, for investigation. And next week I'm going to be talking about the male causes of infertility. So they are going to submit you to inf investigation. They are going to look at your tubes. They are going to do your hormonal levels and see if your hormones are balanced. They are going to do a, a test to look at your tubes if they are patterned. They are going to see if your prolactin, which is the, the one you produce milk from your breast, if it's too high, they'll give you medication to bring it down. Somebody has called me before from Nigeria and said, eh, can you buy me uh, this medicine? Because my friend is taking it to, to be able to conceive. I said, but do you know why you haven't conceived? I've showed so many, I've so, so many causes of infertility here. And these causes can be interlinked, can be mixed together. It might not just be one cause. Maybe you have tubal problem and you have a fibroid. Maybe you have your tubes are blocked and you have a fibroid. So that is two problems. So the other person may just have prolactin level being high and they give him her medication to bring it down. But because the other person has brought it down and is pregnant, everybody says, that doctor helped me. That is what I'm doing. Everybody goes there and they take that medication. Your problem is different from another person. This is what I keep telling women. Don't go and follow other people. Your problem is specific to you. You go and seek investigation for your problem. And don't depend on what uh, 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 Mrs. B did to get pregnant. You go and seek for your own. So they will take a history, they will examine you, they will investigate, they will offer treatment, they will offer treatment if they know that, look, your situation, we can't help you. They will tell you, look, you need to adopt. And don't wait till when you're 45, you now start saying, I need to do IVF. In Europe here, developed countries, they don't even accept you for IVF at 40. They don't. In Nigeria, they are still doing it. In Germany, they don't accept you. In Europe, they would they will tell you you can go private, but they're not going to fund you because it's low, low, low risk. When you're younger, they are able to treat you. So what am I saying? Do not ask, start blaming people. There are a lot of causes that make you infertile. So many things from your vagina to your cervix, to your womb, to your tubes, to your ovaries. You may not be producing eggs. They need to find out why. You may not be ovulating. They need to, need to know why and investigate and help you. But all those prophets, Jeremiah, them, all of them, all these people, they're not going to help you. 200 days fasting is not going to open your tubes. Open your eyes, woman. I'm talking to you with a heart of love. I am a woman. I've got children. And I pray for you to have those people that want to have. Some women don't want. If you want children, open your eyes. You need to go and find out from yourself what is the causes of my problem. Stop looking at that poor old mother-in-law of yours. You need to be taking care of her. Stop blaming uncles and aunties. <coughs> Sorry. Stop looking for who is the cause of your problem. You are the cause of your problem because you're not seeking help. You're not seeking help from... The, you are seeking help from wrong places. 
You're going all around in circle. The only place you should go, you haven't been yet. You're spending money. They're even abusing your body. Some pastors tell you they have anointed penis. When they put it inside of you, you get pregnant. Some people tell you that they, they have anointed, come and do anointed, special prayer. They put you in their house and they're sleeping with you every night. You cannot tell your husband, but you're going through all these things just because you're looking for who is the cause of my infertility and not what is the cause of my infertility. What is the cause will open your eyes? What is the cause will make you to seek help? What is the cause will make you to be truthful to yourself? And today, God, God is a God of, of, of love. God is a God of fairness. He's fair to all of us. Maybe in the past, we've done things, we've got infections. Yes, we didn't treat it properly. But you can submit yourself for medical tests and you can be treated. You can be treated. So pregnancy is achieved by both parties. And today we are dealing with men, uh, women, sorry. So please, a woman out there, stop going around in circles. Go and look for a seasoned gynecologist. If you don't have one, please contact me. I have so many of them. I know so many gynecologists, brilliant ones, who can help you walk through these investigations and get so, and get you, offer you solutions. I have lots of them. I don't get any money. I don't even do any, any of those finances. I just get you help if I need to. I contact who I need to contact to get you help. You need to get that help and not go around in, 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 in circles. You need to get that help and not go around in circles. Those prayer houses will not help you. They are abusing you. They are abusing you. You are made in the image of God. You are not supposed to be abused. You are not supposed to be abused by any man. You are supposed to be a, a woman that after... You know, women those days, how God carry women. You know, Rachel, Hannah, they knew God. They knew who their God is. You can be seeking investigation, but you pray to your God. You talk to God like Anna. You hold on to him and say, God, you're the giver of children. Give me my own child. You know, God was even particular about the children of, of, of Sarah and that slave woman. When the slave woman was in, in the wilderness, when Sarah sent her away, God appeared to her because the baby was dying and said, woman, give her water to feed the baby. God is particular about you. You just need to know him. You just need to walk with him. Not with any man. Don't let any man stand between you and God. Don't let any prophet stand between you and God. When you're seeking, when you're seeking solutions to your infertility, submit to a gynecologist. A gynecologist, a seasoned one. Go through the process. It is not give and take. It's not just go today, come back. No, it is a process. Go through with your partner. Go through that pit. It's better than being abused. It's better than being dehumanized. It's better than being looked down on. It's better than one charlatan abusing your body. It's better than anointed cucumbers. It's better than pray a miracle mat. It's better than pool of beside her. It's better than somebody selling you babies. Please. That is the talk today. Next week I'm going to be coming back with male infertility male infertility which is one third of the problem are caused by male one third are caused by women and one third is unknown so if you're a woman and you're looking for a child maybe you've never conceived before or maybe you've conceived before but then you cannot conceive anymore you need to go and get investigated go to the hospital there are so many causes of infertility i've mentioned here you need to go and get it checked and know what is the cause of my infertility not who is a cause of my infertility thank you 